Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise to see the great, the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice.
you know, with with bringing not the not necessarily the best and the brightest, but in many ways the best and the brightest. But you're bringing us the future leaders, the people that are striving in every way to just get better and better and better. Now listen, this job's a tough job, you know, and you catch all kinds of flack. You know, I, I see lots and lots of friends, you know, whether it be Bill or whom, Elmer, whomever it may be that are here, that have absolutely done great work in many different areas, way beyond the education area, but they still devote time and effort into the education area. My first day in the state, I said education should be our centerpiece in West Virginia. First day of the state. It wasn't just a tagline that was right from my heart. But why do I think that way? And here's exactly why I think that way. I think that way because West Virginia has an image or had an image that was absolutely killing us. You see, a lot of people may say, well, you know, justice has done stuff for roads and the veterans and all this stuff, education, everything under the sun, blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, we balance budgets and we got surpluses and we're doing this and that and everything. We just keep on, keep on, keep on and we're rolling and everything, but a lot of times we miss the very thing that will perpetuate us beyond belief. And that is this, we had to change our image. We had to change the way people perceived West Virginia. You, you are the absolute cornerstones to that in every way. You see, if we put a stake in the ground that says, by God, we're going to believe that education ought to be our centerpiece in every way. And then all of a sudden we got to work on our roads and then we made a real commitment to tourism and a real commitment to our veterans and we started to diversify and still yet be very proud of our natural resources and all the stuff we do there. All of a sudden the outside world started thinking, well, Dad, maybe, just maybe, we've missed something. Maybe that state that we thought was backward and ignorant and dark and dingy and all that stuff, just maybe that state is a diamond in the rough that we missed. Maybe. Now, with that being said, all of a sudden off we go. And today, today, really and truly, on a national scene, West Virginia is perceived so much differently today than we were forevermore. There's nothing that I could bring you better than just that. Because now what you've got to do is just what you want to do, I know. Just what I said, you know, whether it be a Bill or an Elmer or all of these people that are on wonderful boards and all the stuff that you do, all the stuff that you do, absolutely is what in your heart you want to do and you believe in you believe in it now reality is just this a lot of times higher ed has been a low-hanging fruit for budget cuts all over the place a lot of times that's the first place we look we got a problem well we don't need all this money over here in higher ed but when we start taking money away it's just like I said over and over about that pond and the frog. As soon as you start taking money away, any frog that's not proud of his own pond isn't much of a frog. And so really at the end of the day, you know, absolutely all I can do is just continue to congratulate you, continue to encourage you, continue to know just this. What is my job? My job is to bring enough industry, to bring enough job opportunity here. And what is your job? Your job is to prepare people to be able to take the reins and move us forward. Now, you can't, I mean, you can't fathom the number of people that we talk to all the time. 
absolutely that are possibilities and you run every one of them to ground, you're not going to get them all. You're not going to get them all. But you still run them to ground. And you do it the very best you possibly can. You know, there's a guy, and I think his name is Jay Whaler. I believe that is how you pronounce his last name. But Jay is the president of Virgin Hyperloop One. Now, just imagine this. Now, imagine, imagine in West Virginia. Imagine that we could be the training center, or we could be the research center in West Virginia of something like this. I mean, you know, Richard Branson and, 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 and Virgin Airlines and Virgin and all the stuff that they've done, they have a concept and it is the, it is the most phenomenal thing you could imagine. It is an 11 foot tube and there's pods within the tube. And they want those spots to go 670 miles an hour. You could go from Morgantown to DC, not in 40 minutes, but in about 17 minutes. You have no sensation of feel as the, as the magnitude of your speed. They've got 200 people working on it. These are really smart people. They're the people that you have to train. They're looking at us because of our proximity to population, our terrain, and all this hype that they hear. Imagine, just imagine, a different type of transportation than we've ever experienced, we've ever thought of. Runs off of magnets. It's amazing. If, you know, if, you know, if that doesn't just flip you out enough, think about this for a second. Think about taking coal and through a chemical process and compressing it, making it into carbon fiber, you know, and then from that, think about the concept or the idea that coal is too valuable to burn. Wouldn't it be something? Wouldn't it be something? There's a group that we're working with right now in the, in the whole process in the, in the country today, they can use 120 million tons of coal. And our greatest payday, our greatest height in West Virginia, we produced 181 million tons. 125 million tons that they can use, that they want to use. This is not just nothing. This is a real live company, a real live natural resource producing company. Now think about compressing it, making carbon fiber, making a product that is twice as strong as steel, four times as light as steel, and it will, will never rust. Think about it. All, and, and you, say, you may say, well, just as those things aren't going to happen, they're just dreams. Well, that's all I've ever done. That's all I've ever done. I've absolutely thought big, and we've done some stuff that nobody else could have ever, ever dreamt of. That's what you do. That's exactly what you do. You think big, you educate us to be dreamers, to have visions, to have goals, to aspire to be the very, very best. I can never, ever, ever tell you that nobody, this is a political speech, nobody in the world is more in your court, nobody believes more that education ought to be just what this chunky little guy here, maybe a little more than chunky, strolled into the state of the state and said, put our stake in the sand. Education should be our centerpiece. Nobody wants to come to West Virginia unless they ask the first question, what about the schools? The first question they always ask, what about the schools? What about the opportunities for education in West Virginia? Because you know, really and truly, before they ever came, they thought we had to kill a deer every day to feed the kids at school. That's what they thought about us. You know, now, we're moving. And I congratulate every one of you on all the successes, and I'll just tell you just this, that I'm, I'm with you. I'm all in with you.
And I'm not all in with you from the standpoint of being a politician. I am all in with you because I believe. I believe that every day we're closer and closer to an enormous employment potential in West Virginia. An enormous employment potential. And as we get closer, we need you more and more and more and more each and every day. And as that employment potential grows and comes to pass, it will. You mark it down, it will. Now I know a bunch of you probably think are going to say, oh my gosh, I wish he wouldn't have said it because I liked everything he said up till there and everything. Several may not have the same views of our president today. And I would be first to say that our president, even though we are best buddies, there's times when Donald gets out over his skis. And he says stuff at times that, that I wouldn't say. But I'm going to tell you just this. If we lose him today, and it comes to pass what others are wanting to do, you won't have to worry about a lot because West Virginia will end up a state park. You know, as far as funding, I don't know where you go or what you'll do. And I don't mean that in a way that, you know, is contradictory to your views about, about our president. I am just telling you point blank, West Virginia, as far as many perceive, is not needed. And that, to me, is a real, real selfish, selfish concern. Because I know just how great we really are. And I know the opportunities. Now I would be first to say, very, very first to say, we want the cleanest environment, the cleanest water. Nobody loves the outdoors better than I. Absolutely, we want that through and through. We can't just run completely away from our natural resources, whether they be, whether they be coal or oil or gas or timber or water. We can't just throw them all away. But we need to diversify in every way and keep more and more and more diversification coming. The best example I can possibly tell you about that today is all the downstream manufacturing. We're growing in manufacturing jobs in West Virginia today for the first time in over a decade. Absolutely, we are almost, we are just right teetering on the highest workforce employment in the state in history. You know, now, in addition to all that, tourism is exploding. There's so many things from high tech to higher ed to all kinds of stuff that, that are right at our fingertips exploding. When we finish quarter H in the Coalfield Expressway and we can do it, and we can pull it all off, just boom. As soon as the president goes with an infrastructure program, we will get our share of the money. I'll promise you because his buddy that's sitting right on this stool won't we'll turn it loose and boom, we'll finish those two projects tomorrow. Now, it will open us up to so many opportunities, so many, many things. It's coming. It's really, really coming. You are the engines. You are the ones that make it run. It's my opportunity to go get the bears. It's your opportunity to skin them. You know, in one of the old movies a long time ago, there was two fellas. And they were trying to figure out, you know, what, which one would hunt and which one would skin. And the guy, they kind of flipped a coin, the guy that was going to go hunt, go out in the field and out in the woods, up in the mountains and everything, he didn't like it because he didn't have much of a gun and everything. And he was going to try to get a bear. And that was going to be really tough because he knew how mean those bears were. And so all of a sudden he, he's up in the mountain and he shoots and they're in a cabin in the mountains. And this cabin is just a log cabin. It's got a door in the front and one in the back and everything. Just a great room and everything. That's all it is. And the guy that's skinning is down at the cabin. And the guy that's hunting is out in the woods. Remember, you're the skinners and I'm the hunter. And all of a sudden he shoots 
and he doesn't get the bear, but here comes the bear after him. So he's running down the mountain at the top of his leg speed that he could possibly run. And as he busts through the door, he yells, I got you one, you take care of that one, I'll go get another one. And then he goes out to the back door and slams the door. So that's what I'll do. I'll go get you one, but you've got to skim. It's your job to skim. And you'll do it. And you'll do it very well. And so I, I'll end by just saying I thank you for all you do. I love you with all my soul. I'll be right with you every day and every step of the world. You won't have to come. You don't need to come and, and say, well, where's the governor? Where's the governor? Where's the governor on this and that and everything? Look, if I tell you it's a seven, it's going to be a seven. If you come back in three weeks, it'll be a seven. Make a lot of mistakes, but I won't tell you anything but the truth. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you. Thank you.